what is considered deep water where you fish. It's very easy. It basically breaks down to the lake you're fishing. Bass are a product of their given environment. If they're born and live their life in a shallow lake, then deep water is going to mean something different to them than to bass that are born in a deeper lake. I'm going to show you some differences on lakes in this video. What each one kind of means to the bass. What is relative deep water to those bass on each individual lake and hopefully you can apply that to whatever lake you're going to fish. Again, it does require you to access bathymetric maps or topo map for your lakes and I've showed you on Northwest Fishing Reports. I'm going to use them again here where you can access a lot of that data and you can take that data for your individual lake and if you go back through my old video on topo time, you can color them in and start to find depths and features that will help you locate these bass. So for starters, I'm going to use a lake that's north of me that I know fairly well. It's a shallow water lake, what I would consider a shallow water vegetation thick lake. The deepest water on this particular body of water is going to get to, depending on lake levels, about 8 to 10 feet. I'm going to use 8 feet as an example just because theoretically in the summertime when you're going to be fishing for deeper bass, you're going to be looking for deeper water unless that lake has heavy vegetation bass will use the vegetation in lieu of access to deeper cooler water so when you think of water strata think in five foot increments so zero to five five to ten ten to fifteen fifteen to twenty on down to whatever depth bass in shallow water lakes that have access to thick vegetation are going to utilize that thick vegetation to keep cool. It's shade, it's ambush, it's where the prey is going to seek shelter also. However, in the summer months when it gets hot and bass want to seek out the coolest water they can find, it's going to be deeper water. So in a lake that only gets eight feet deep, that eight foot range becomes important to these fish. You may have fish in this lake that stay five feet or shallower, three feet or shallower the majority of the year. But in the winter time and the summertime, they're going to seek out that deeper water. Not all of them. And that goes for the majority of lakes and especially in the summer. Depending on what kind of cover is available in the shallow depths is going to dictate how many of these bass pull off into deeper water. So for instance, a lake that has eight foot depth maximum range, you're gonna be we want to target the thickest vegetation you can find, but you wanna check varying depths. And where you hit fish from, chances are the rest of that lake, you're gonna hit fish in that depth. But the vegetation changes things in a way, some of this lake may be inaccessible unless you're in a kayak, just because there's trolling motors aren't gonna cut through a lot of the vegetation in this lake in around the August time frame. So now if I were to compare this lake, which is a largemouth lake, to its neighbor to the east, which is a smallmouth lake. So when you get on Lake Whatcom over here to the east of that lake, in this upper pool, the deepest water available is kind of out in that 55, maybe 75 foot range. But as you go south on this lake, you get down past this little island right here. You're now, this whole lower body right here can reach depths in excess of 300 feet deep. So that's a dramatic difference. So the deepest bass I've ever caught in this particular lake came from 55 feet of water. And that is not the norm by any means, but it just shows you that bass will seek out the water that's the most comfortable for them. And that is going to be relative to the lake they live on. The two times of year that this is going to apply, summer, and I'm talking the heat of summer, so mid-July to the middle of September, and winter, the coldest months, so late December through February. Bass are going to seek out refuge typically in the deeper water areas where they feel most comfortable. If you're dealing with a shallow body of water, chances are that is going to mean 
they're going to be as deep as that particular lake allows them to get. A lot of the vegetation dies off in the winter, so they have to access and try to get deeper just to be comfortable. Bass in lakes like, say, Whatcom, a Lake Sammamish, that 30 to 50 foot range might be perfect, and that's maybe where you find them. You know, I've heard stories on Lake Washington of people catching smallmouth trolling crankbaits on downriggers in 80 feet of water. It's, it's just amazing, but if they can get in comfortable water, water in the winter they're going to stay active and they're going to try to find that comfortable water in the summer but because it's summer and because it's warm anyway they're going to stay active but in that winter to find those active fish finding the water that they find comfortable is going to be fairly paramount let's utilize some of these topo maps now and take a look at some of the variables even on a given lake so this is the lake that we just had the tournament on lake rossinger in snohomish county now if you look it's this lake is comprised of three separate pools or basins. Basin one where your boat launch is down here. Maximum depth about 75 feet. So realistically the fish that live in this lower basin have access to just about everything they need for their life cycle. They have access to shallow water to spawn. They have access to cover along the shorelines. And then they have access to deep enough water where they can stay comfortable in the winter. However, if you go up to the center basin of this lake, the deepest water you're lucky if it's 10 feet and that 10 foot water is going to be very susceptible to temperature change right now they're in there they're spawning once that spawns over they're going to vacate that area some bass will stay in that area for quite a while you know for a few more months actually but once we start getting into those summer months and then on through fall you'll find fish in there again and then in the winter they're going to transition out to these deeper areas all right moving to the upper basin or the third pond as it's called on this lake you've got a maximum depth of 115 feet they've got shallow shoreline access if they need it they have steeper bank sections where they can get in the winter time and in the summertime to utilize and move up and down easily to regulate their body temperature what makes this lake difficult to fish is once they've left those shallows if you are not comfortable fishing deep, you're going to have a hard time finding these fish. They have a lot of opportunity to get deep, get comfortable in areas where most bass fishermen don't look for them. So you really need to understand your lake. So let's take a look at another one, a lake we're all fairly familiar with, Lake Sammamish. So Lake Sammamish, again, most of your shoreline is going to offer you that 0 to 20 foot range. And that is an acceptable water range for bass. I would say almost two-thirds of the year. All of your pre-spawn from, say, March all the way through to mid-July, that's the acceptable range of water. And especially this lake, it's going to stay cooler because it's got deeper water available to it. The shallow, skinny water lakes that only get to maybe 10, 15 feet deep, they're going to heat up a lot quicker and they're going to get hotter than these bigger bodies of water do. It's the times where we get into the real dog days of summer, like August and this state uh, and in western Washington pretty much August and the winter months. So when you're talking January, February time frame finding hard bottom or rock piles on Lake Sammamish in that 30 to 50 foot depth and you can be on smallmouth when it's snowing outside. It's a great lake for fishing in the winter because of the hard bottom and rock pile options that are available and do exist in this particular lake. So understanding that your lake is going to offer certain varying depths is important but you'll still want to get out onto that lake to find cover options in those depths so if you've got a lake where you fish and honestly right now april may and june are the easiest months to bass fish because the bass are all shallow. So they're easily accessible. We know where to find them. It gets gravy right now. The same can be said for fall. So September, October, and into November, bass are shallow. Not all of them, but bass are shallow. We know where to find them. It's all the same obvious stuff, and it's it's a gravy time of year. And they got the feed bags on because winter's coming. It can really be a great time of year. It's the off seasons. It's that summer months. You you can hit fish shallow night fishing. They will move up to night fish, but in the middle of the day, if you're not finding fish or all your shallow stuff isn't working, those fish are behind you. So it's a good time to get out if you have electronics, find targets out in that 
15 to 25 foot range that you want to go investigate when you're midday in the summertime and you're not getting bites. Also, in the winter time, you want to know where those same pieces of cover are and even a little bit deeper so that you can go out there and, and just start your search. That's not to say that you can't catch a bass shallow in the winter time. You can, provided that it's a good feeding opportunity for those bass to move up and get on shallow cover for a brief moment of time during the course of a day. The majority of these fish are going to be in deeper water in those times of year. Here's another example. Here is a Lake McIntosh down south. I want to say Lewis County. And I did this lake in topo time just to kind of demonstrate this. That little bowl right there where it says 11 feet plus, that is going to be something to pay attention to. However, like most of your shallow lakes, this lake is solid thick milfoil and lily pads and grass in the summertime. So in the summertime, just targeting vegetation correctly can get you bit on this lake. Anywhere where you find cover combinations, so you've got a piece of wood sticking up out of a lily pad field, a whole bunch of milfoil, but then there's piling sticking up at it. That's just higher percentage stuff in this. Otherwise, you are going to be pitching and flipping grass for hours. And when you find one and you catch that fish, you want to keep hitting that spot and draw a circle in your mind about 40 feet around that spot and just pick it apart because typically in the thicker grass where you find one you're going to find more because there's something down underneath that vegetation that they're relating to and it's holding them there and if it's going to hold one it's going to hold more okay so you've decided to venture out and get away from the shore and start trying to fish some of this deeper water maybe you've bought some electronics and you're out messing around with them and you're spotting stuff here and there and you're making some waypoints that's awesome now you need to get a bait down to them obviously spinner baits and things like that are gonna be a lot more difficult to get to these fish than some of your bottom baits like jig carolina rigs and things like that when you're trying to access deeper water fish with your baits you have two options you can up the weight of your bait to get it to sink down to these fish and to fight the pressure associated with the deeper water or you have to go down in line size so if you're fishing finesse rigs like a drop shot ned rigs a shaky head it may not be conducive to go up to a three quarter ounce or a one ounce weight what you can do is change your line diameter from say a 10 to an 8 to a six pound test and that will help lessen the resistance on your line and it'll help that bait get down to where these fish are located personally my drop shot rig is a 100 percent of the time eight pound fluorocarbon leader of about six plus feet to a 10 pound braid main line. Unless I'm in grass or unless I'm in really shallow water, I'm running a half ounce weight. And I've had tremendous luck with that setup. If I get into shallow water, I will drop to a quarter ounce weight, an eighth ounce weight. If I get around grass, I will switch over to the pencil weights because they come through the grass so much easier. The same can be said for jigs. If you're going to go to a half ounce jig, you're going to go to a three quarter ounce jig, you might even have to go to a one ounce jig because not only do you need to get your bait to the bottom, you need to be able to keep contact with that bait. Maintaining contact with that bait is going to be critical to detecting strikes or knowing that a fish has now picked up your bait. In depths deeper than 15 feet, it's going to become very critical to get your line diameter correct. You may have to go down to a six pound test. You may have to go from a monofilament to a fluorocarbon, get a line that sinks to help that bait get down there. These are all things that you just kind of have to play with once you're out there. Key and most important part is once that bait is on the bottom, you have to be able to maintain contact with it through your rod. You have to be able to feel what that bait is doing. If your bait is on the bottom or you think it's on the bottom because you don't have a really good connection with that bait, a fish can pick that bait up, spit it out, and you'll never even know it was there. Playing around with the not only the weight of your bait, but changing line diameter, and that means have one rod that's tied up with your normal stuff and then have a maybe a spare spool with a lighter line on it or a secondary rod with lighter line on it. Just to be able to get down access to the deeper parts of the 
the lake. You can go to some deep diving crankbaits. You're just limited to kind of the same stuff that everybody else is throwing. Deep diving crankbaits, a deep diving crankbait, they really don't do a whole lot different than one another. Just giving those fish something that's completely different that they're not used to seeing when they're out on those spots can really be effective. The 55 foot deep fish that I caught on Lake Whatcom was on a drop shot. It was a half ounce weight. And when that weight got to about 40 feet deep, its sink rate was a lot slower just because of the pressures down there. From a fish health standpoint, don't be afraid of catching bass from deep water. As long as you're releasing those fish, you're not going to have any issues whatsoever. They swim right back down there. It only takes a few seconds and they're back down at the depth you caught them at. Only when you have to put them in the live well and tote them around that you can run into issues. But when you're looking for bass this summer, or if you choose to try and fish in the winter for the first time, remember a couple things. And I'm talking in depths that are 20 feet or deeper. When you're driving your boat and if you're looking at electronics, you see cover down there, you will not necessarily see fish on that cover. And the reason is they get so tight to cover that you it's really hard to differentiate. I did a video called Advanced Sonar Tactics, Winter Sonar Tactics. And one of the things I like to do is just find the cover, then reposition on the cover, and then get a bait down there and just watch for movement. If something comes up, up and looks at my bait I got a really good idea that there are fish active in that depth I can back off I can throw jigs in there Texas rig Carolina rigs whatever I need to do to get down there I can just go ahead and continue to use the drop shot but now once I catch a fish I can look at that fish and determine is it a quality fish is it a smaller fish and then I can adjust my depth from there but I can also understand what that fish was holding on it was up against wood or was it around rocks all stuff that's really easy to do with a electronics. This is a great example of somebody's taking the time to colorize a topographical map of Alder Lake. Now this isn't a really detailed map. Uh, its depths are running looks like 25 foot increments, 50 foot increments, but it gives you an idea. If you go back to topo time and I showed you how to fill those in and some of the features to look for as we transition from post-spawn to the summer patterns, yes fish will stay shallow, not all of them. Yes shallow cover remains viable not all of it but the fish will change positions throughout the day and that is something to keep in mind if you're fishing and fishing maybe you catch some early in the morning and then all of a sudden the bites go away and nothing's really working chances are those fish have repositioned to deeper water or an adjacent drop off and you need to kind of bump out and start hitting those areas to stay consistently on those fish you know this lake is cool just because it shows you some of the different you know old creek channel right here running some of your shallower areas areas over here where it's way off in this corner it's you know 30 feet or less this is all stuff that you can do on your own time on your own computer when you're bored and, or you just can't fish if you consistently go to the same lake over and over again then really dissecting and playing with stuff like this and and picking it apart is going to be very beneficial to you finding those areas are one part of the puzzle finding the cover on those areas that takes being on the water and graphing these areas and looking for features that will hold these fish weed edges uh, grass clumps rocks wood all that stuff exists on the bottom of these lakes you just got to go out there and find it and then find it in relation to where these fish are going to position more than likely during seasonal times of the year and you'll just up your catch ratio uh, tremendously so that's just a quick rundown and in relation to deep water deep water is relative to your lake and you pick a lake the primary basic thing you need to understand about that lake is it's topographical features. So you need to find these maps. Northwest Fishing Reports has a comprehensive library of these topographical maps. And it's a great resource. But understanding that about your lake or a lake that you're going to, and then add to that what time of year is it? Mid-March to mid-June, 10 feet or less. You really don't have to worry about much else. From mid-June to mid-September, that out to that 25-foot range is really going to kind of come into its own. And in the winter time, Time, the fish are going to move as deep as the lake allows for them to find a comfort level that's suitable to their needs and then they're going to hold up on whatever cover they can find in that depth range. It just takes getting out and looking around at stuff and putting the time in to finding these spots and then going back and fishing them at different times of the year. You can fish a spot three different seasons 
and there's never a fish on it but before you delete that waypoint fish at that fourth season because it might be a winter holding spot it might be a summer holding spot you really just want to put that time in and get out there and dissect your lake if you don't want to fish in the winter time it is an absolute amazing great perfect time because typically you're going to have calm wind conditions you can get out and motor around and play with your electronics if you're new to them and just look for stuff and mark it and mark it and mark it come back when the season gets going fish it and start figuring out what times a year what months are fish utilizing this cover and you'll start to see patterns develop on your own lakes and it will dictate to you how these fish are moving from shallow to deeper water what they're preferring to hold on and that will also show you what their transitional routes are that fish is moving from deeper water to shallow water you know kind of the two areas now you know a path that it might choose to move up there and get onto that shallow water when it wants to so stuff to keep in mind stuff to try out this never ever 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 gets old